I'm going to be ending the salt debate with this video. Seriously, I don't think I've ever seen someone bring up the things I'm going to bring up in this video. All I want from you is a great attention span, okay? Because we're going to go through things. And if you skip any of the things, then you're going to miss out. Because if you have this understanding about salt, then you have something that many people don't have. We're going to start with how minerals are transported from the soil to animals. And the important thing here is to realize that minerals come from the soil. Plants get minerals from the soil. So the water that hits the soil, that is in the soil, is nutrient rich. It isn't just water. It mixes with the soil and it obtains minerals because it breaks down what is in the soil too. Like rocks as an example, they're very mineral rich, they're made of minerals. And then the plant sucks up these minerals together with the water and now it has water. What happens then? Well, the plant has obtained minerals, and now animals eat the plant. And then this animal has minerals, and now another animal eats both the plant and maybe also the animal. And that is how animals, which is the class that we are in, obtain minerals. Okay, so you've got the soil, the plant sucks up minerals from the soil, and then we eat the plant and we eat animals. And that is how we get minerals. The next thing we have to figure out is what is salt? So for humans, salt is a rock that is primarily composed of sodium chloride. If it is found in nature, you'll also find other minerals in there. If it's made in a factory, basic table salt is made in a factory, then you're only going to have sodium chloride and you'll have iodine if it's enriched with iodine. So the primary reason as to why humans consume salt is because it adds taste. It makes the food more interesting. And I guess you've experienced this. If you salt your food, certain foods at least, they become more interesting to eat. The taste is better. And of course, if something tastes better, humans will naturally pursue that. Now, the next question we need to answer is, how do we obtain any other mineral? Well, again, we get it from plants and animals. Plants get it from the soil, and then animals eat other animals who ate the plant, and also the plant. So we eat the plant, and we eat other animals, and we get minerals in that way, including sodium. But all the other minerals that we get, we get in this manner. Now, when it comes to sodium, sodium is the exception because most people don't get it through food. They get it from salt. They do get it from food, but the overwhelming majority of their sodium intake comes from salt. What I want you to realize is that sodium is the exception. Sodium is the only mineral which we obtain from eating rocks. All other minerals are obtained through us eating plants and animals. Now, to understand if this is a problem or not, we need to look at other facts. And what I want to look at is our history with salt. So for how long have we eaten salt? We've eaten salt for approximately 6,000 years, or at least widespread use of salt came about 6,000 years ago. Now, the thing is, we as a species, so Homo sapiens, have existed for 200,000 to 300,000 years. And were we healthy during that time? Probably. We can look at other animals living in nature and they're healthy, so there's no reason to believe that we weren't healthy. So, if we say that we were healthy and we weren't consuming salt, well then it is obvious that we don't need to consume salt. Now before we look at some science, I want to quote the book We Want to Live, more specifically Appendix J. I worked with people who had long histories of headaches. 90% of these people ate a lot of salt. When they stopped consuming all types of condiment salts, which are radical, that is, harmful, including sea salt, they stopped having frequent headaches. Periodically, their headaches returned. Whenever the headaches returned, I had their blood and urine analyzed. Each analysis showed sodium molecules clumping, just as if they had recently consumed condiment salts. They assured me they hadn't. Also, all of the analyses showed high levels of dead cells, especially liver and brain cells. The conclusion I drew was that radical salts had stored in the body and killed the surrounding cells by dehydrating them. I realized that the salt and dead cells in the blood and urine indicated that the body was cleansing salt and dead cells, and that salts store throughout the body, especially in the brain and sometimes liver and brain. And here is the entry called salt in We Want to Live. Table salt is a catalyst in the development of all diseases in most people. Mineral salts are plant food, not food for humans. If they were food for humans, we could live on dirt. The vegetable kingdom makes wonderful use of mineral salts in balanced ratios to grow healthfully and strong. 
After they make the salts into bioactively available substances, we can juice their leaves, stalks and roots to obtain concentrations of those salts. In our bodies, mineral salts that are not naturally present in food imbalance our systems, causing many diseases, including cellular dehydration, edema and bone diseases and malformations. Now with that said, can we find examples of salt being unhealthy in science? Well, yes we can. So in this study, they looked at people with high blood pressure in rural areas of Iran and they educated them about their high blood pressure and that it was due to their high salt consumption. So they had a group where they told them to stop eating so much salt. And then when they followed up with them, their blood pressure had dropped. And in this study, they literally just discuss how salt is one of the contributing factors that are causing children to develop high blood pressure. And I want you to understand something about high blood pressure. And it is that it's not inherently a bad thing. It is a reaction. It is something that your body must do in response to something that you're putting it through. As an example, if someone gets fat, and remember obesity is very highly correlated with hypertension, if you get fat, then there's more pressure on the arteries. If there's more pressure from the outside, then you need more pressure from the inside. So obviously, it's going to be harder to pump the blood around. So both types of blood pressure will go up if you're fat. That's just a reaction. That is something that needs to happen. And in this case, it seems to be a reaction to something that is toxic. All right, so here's the solution and the conclusion. You see, when sodium is intelligently placed inside of plants and animals, and we eat the plants and the animals, we have no problems utilizing the sodium. It is non-toxic because it is a part of an intelligent system. But when we consume it in its rock form, it is a free radical, you could say. It's not really a radical, but it's just an ion floating around and it's not bound to anything specific. So when we consume it, it causes problems because you have to remember that sodium, if I'm not mistaken, is the absolute most reactive metal on the periodic system. If you want to consume more sodium, if you feel like, okay, if I consume more sodium, I feel better, then find foods that have high amounts of naturally occurring sodium and consume more of them. Because then you're getting sodium in an intelligent manner. You're not getting it in its rock form. That is not how we're supposed to consume minerals. We're supposed to get them from plants, fungi, and animals. We're not supposed to get them from the soil. Again, otherwise, we could just eat rocks, and we cannot do that. Lastly, I want to share a hack that will make you obtain more sodium without risking any damage to any of your cells. You see, our skin can eat. We don't only eat through our mouth, we eat through our skin. If you put butter on your face, your skin cells on your face will absorb the nutrients in the butter, and that's why your skin looks better and becomes softer when you put certain things on it. Now, if you swim in water that contains all right concentrations of sodium or any other mineral, then you will absorb that mineral through your skin. So, if you have access to unpolluted ocean water and you can swim in it, then go and swim in it and you'll obtain sodium. That is a way of obtaining sodium. And hey, you don't have to go that route. If you just take salt, so natural salt that is sun-dried, like Himalaya salt or sea salt, and you put it in your bath water, then that's enough really. As I usually like to mention, I have a free PDF on my website called The 10 Dietary Rules. If you are interested in health, if you want to delve into nutrition, this is an essential read. It is not long and it is very, very packed with very good information. So go get it, it's free and it's short. So there's no reason to not get it. And there's no confirmation page. So once you put in your name and your email and you click, you'll get to the six health commandments. You won't have a confirmation page, but you'll find the PDF in your email. I also have a recently updated book, by the way, that is called The Six Health Commandments. And in this book, I share what health actually is, where it comes from, and the six fundamental commandments that actually lead to health. So any human being, or any animal for that matter, that is healthy must follow these commandments to some degree. And they're more suited to humans, of course. Go and achieve excellent health. I know you can do it.